Hey guys, today I show you how I create Photoshop mockups for my paintings. I am working on a new commission and I haven't started the oil painting yet. So this video is only about the Photoshop process. Because this is one of my more elaborate pieces on which I will spend a lot of time and dedicate a lot of energy to, I thought it would be a good example to show you how I create the mockup for a more serious oil painting. At first I didn't plan to make this kind of video and I just recorded my photo process for fun, but after having watched the time lapse for the first time myself, I found it super interesting. Normally I'm used to watching only painting time lapses and this Photoshop process looks so different and unusual that I thought this might be interesting for you too. In addition, because I mention in every video that I create a Photoshop mockup before I start my paintings, I thought it really is time to finally show to you how I do it so that you can get an idea of what I'm actually talking about. Also, if you like to learn more about how to do a Photoshop mockup yourself, especially which functions and short keys you need to use, I created a tutorial for my patrons that is specialized in this very process. I talk about the basic functions that I need for every mockup and explain for beginners how to implement them. You can get access to this by supporting me on Patreon at the $5 reward tier. And there's also a quick link to this specific tutorial in the description of this video. I also added a list of my most recent tutorials on the front page of my Patreon account so that you can get quick access to them. For this commission, the idea is a dancing Maiko in a blue kimono, standing in front of a flower arc. And what I do when I create such images is that I at first just browse for long periods of time through the internet and look for reference pictures and inspiration. And then when I finally find an interesting pose, I recreate it myself and I take pictures with my smartphone. It has the fantastic feature to take a picture when I say take a picture. <laughs> this is pretty useful. Then I just chose the pose that fits the model that I found on the internet and Frankenstein everything together to get an aesthetic and interesting picture. It should both look elegant and also just attracting the viewer. What I did as well is that I merged the face out of two different faces. Honestly, I just do it because it's fun. It's not really necessary, but I just felt it would look more unique this way. Cutting my own head off and replacing it with a prettier version, by the way, is super awkward, but kinda funny too. I took two Asian models and changed the appearance with the help of the Photoshop function Liquify, with which I can change eye sizes, draw lines, nose length and so on. This feature is super amazing and handy. Then after I finally finished the pose, I worked on the background and just pretty much follow the same structure here browsing through Google images and try to find pretty pictures from which I cut out different pieces and then stitch them together to make an appealing background. I always try to put in some mountains because I love the Chinese mountain shape so much. However, they always get lost in the background because there's kind of never enough space for them. But I try. <laughs> In addition to the photos I found on the internet, I also use pictures of my own flower garden because they tend to fit very well in most of my mockups. I photograph them at certain angles that are useful for my compositions. For the bottom part of the composition, I like to use pictures with dark backgrounds so that I can easily blend them into the picture. The pink lilies on the bottom right corner of the image are nice highlights for example. Then I also added the flower arc, which I also created by stitching together different flower arcs until I was happy with their look. The whole mockup became a bit messy, so I tried to play around with all the flowers to bring in a bit more order. And what I do before finishing the mockup and before I send it to my collector is to change the colors. For that I use the function selective color in Photoshop where I change the blacks and the grays and the whites. By playing around with this function I get beautiful results, almost like the filters on Instagram. I gave my picture a vintage-like flair by increasing the intensity of yellows in the white tones and muting the black tones. By the way, the mockup that you see here is only the first version, so this picture will be sent back and forth to me and my collector and then we discuss several changes until we are both happy with the composition. I preferred this process when working with collectors. I find it helpful because I think it's easier to add changes in Photoshop than doing it in a traditional medium. 
I hope this video was interesting for you and showed you something different. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. Bye bye! Thank you.